What's up guys and girls, it's Vision, and today I'm happy to announce the champion of Team Raw, Valinov in his Aragon's Mirror Monster build. Let's check it out. First off, if you're interested in checking out this build, Valinov was nice enough to make a full build guide for this, and that's going to be down in the description along with a planner. I'm going to play some footage of it in the background and I'm going to give a brief rundown of how this build works. Before I get into that though, I'd like to give a special thank you to everyone in my community that submitted builds. I was really happy with all of the builds that were submitted and I noticed as I was scrolling through the list I was thinking, oh wow, this is really cool, I want to play this. Oh wow, this is really cool, I want to play this. Um, everybody had really nice descriptions going over their builds, nice clips submitted, uh, detailed planners, and I thought everyone really did a great job and when I went over the builds on stream I was looking through these and I really couldn't tell you who the winner would be. Uh, it was hard to predict because honestly everybody had really nice contributions and I would recommend if you're interested in some of these builds that my community put together check out the discord uh, I'm gonna archive this builds of power event section over here and you can go to the submissions and read through here and look um, everybody put in a lot of work into these builds and they're all really worth checking out and if you want a little peek I'll put videos of all of the runners up down in the description too but anyway guys let's get into how Team Raw chose their submission and what builds we were looking for. So first off, all Team Raw builds included a Raw Rune. This is to show our unwavering support to Team Raw. Um, so for starters, all builds have a Raw Rune. Next, none of our builds rely on a bug to function. So you're not, we're not abusing any bugs. There's no broken interactions. Sure, our builds might have bugged nodes here or there, but that's not the focus of the build and that's not required for the build to work. Next, we really wanted to make sure that our builds didn't require any kinds of chase uniques to function. Uh, the raw builds, we wanted to make sure that a new player with not a lot of items in their stash could pick up these builds and play them relatively easily, or at least have a, a, an easy path to get to the items uh, that they would need for these builds to function. So in addition to this, I provided like a sort of template of qualities that we want a raw build to have. First off, a, a solid and clear build theme. What ties your build together? Is your build heavy single target focus? Do you do big bursts of AOE damage? Does your build have a lot of explosions? We want some kind of theme to tie our build, some common thread. And so when somebody looks at your build, they think, oh, okay, this build, I can use it for this, this build does that. Next, we wanted builds that looked flashy. Builds that look just cool to play. So when somebody looks at this build, they think, oh yeah, I want to play that Team Raw build because that looks cool. Lastly, your build needs a cool name. In the Team Raw invitation video, I said, give your build a name that enemies can fear. And I think just having a cool name along with your build is a nice touch. It's a little bit of extra flavor. This wasn't required, but everybody did have cool names. And uh, it's kind of nice to see. I think it's a fun little thing that we added in. So those are the criteria for the Team Raw builds. Uh, so everybody submitted their builds and this came with a description, like a paragraph or two description on how the build works, a planner and a build video or like a clip to go along to show gameplay of the build. And then Team Raw voted on their winners. So the Team Raw build that I'm presenting you today uh, won by popular vote. That's not to say the other builds aren't great, it's just this one is the one that was chosen to represent Team Raw. So let's get into the build now. So once again while we're looking at this build, I'd like to remind you too that Valinov did put together a good build video for this and that's going to be down in the description and he can explain it better than me because he is the one that created the build but I'm just going to go over some basics of this build and what you can expect with the Aragon's Mirror Monster. This build revolves around using a super juiced up Aragon's Mirror, Vol Mirror Bolt Invocation. Uh, which is Hio Hio Ra, Cold Cold Fire. Uh, Aragon's Mirror Bolt says it conjures a fire bolt which repeatedly bounces between enemies and allies, dealing fire damage to enemies it hits and granting ward to allies it hits. Whenever it ricochets, you gain ward. So basically what this is, it does 11 hits. Uh, you send out a ball of fire that bounces between yourself and enemies, and it's doing damage to enemies. Uh, when it hits you, it gives you ward, and every time it bounces, it gives you ward too. So it's a nice little... Uh, auto-targeted AoE type spell even though it's only hitting one target at a time but in addition to that it's giving you a nice blanket of ward on top so it kind of gives you a nice little extra defensive layer. So this deals fire damage, the mirror bolt, 
and i know valinov is scaling the fire damage and he's doing crit and since this is doing fire we also need to generate the cold runes to make this work so how he's doing that is immutable order and the runic invocation tree that makes it so the runes you generate mimic the skills that you have on your hot bar and so he's getting that from a cold converted runic bolt and a cold frost wall and then flame ward on the third slot there so you get cold cold fire consistently and with the runic invocation valinov is mainly casting that through flame rush uh there's a node there that lets it cast the runic invocation at the end of the dash uh but sometimes you can use the runic invocation self-casted uh like in single target situations i know it does a little bit more damage than just from some modifiers in the tree also with copied scrolls in the runic invocation tree there's a chance that the mirror bolt double casts based on the runic energy that you're stacking which is pretty cool 22 hits basically if you double cast the mirror bolt also that's a big chunk of ward the rune bolt in this tree is used as a, primarily as a mana generator and a rune generator too of course uh, but it's also stacking armor shred, which helps the hits of this build do more damage. Once again, the rune bolt's completely converted to cold, so when you're using the immutable order, uh, the rune bolt counts as a cold skill. But yeah, you're, you're basically rune bolts your spam skill to apply debuffs, regenerate mana, stack runes up. Frostwall in this build is serving as a utility skill mainly. Um, Valinov has it set up so that you get a cleanse when you pass through it. You get Frenzy and Haste, Ward gain, Mana gain when you pass through the wall, Ward when enemies pass through the wall, extra little bits of Ward on top of what you're already getting from the Mirror Bolt. In addition to this, he uses Aspirant's Arrival, which makes it so that the longer the Frost Wall sits out, when you pass through the wall, it'll do more damage based on that elapsed time for your next Runic Invocation or Glyph of Dominion. Uh, in this case, it's going to be the Runic Invocation, so the longer your Frost Wall sits out, when you pass through it, your next direct runic invocation, your self-cast version of it, is going to do up to 30% more damage per second that it's existed. And I know in the video that Valinov says he can get the frost wall to about 8 seconds, which would be 240% increased damage, or 240% more damage, uh, if you can let that set out for the max duration almost and then pass through at the very end. Flame Rush is also casting a runic invocation. That's used a lot more in just the process of mapping. Uh, you flame rush, you set your runes up, you flame rush, and then the mirror bolt procs where you land. W while you're flame rushing too, you're getting reduced damage taken, uh, reduced damage over time taken. He's using cold frost wall to apply brand of subjugation. That's with the branding cold node. Uh, the rune master has passives that allow you to do more damage to branded enemies. And that's how he's applying a brand, the brand of subjugation. That's with his frost, his flame rush when he passes through an enemy. Uh, he's also using Ember Wake, and that's the node in the top right of the Flame Rush tree that spawns Runic Embers while you're Flame Rushing, and then when the Flame Rush ends, the Runic Embers go out and seek enemies and do hits. Uh, this is another way to apply Armor Shred too, which is nice in this build. Just getting the extra hits and the extra stacks of debuffs up. But yeah, in the normal Monolith gameplay, you're setting your runes up, you Flame Rush, set your runes up, Flame Rush, and that makes it a more smooth style of going through maps and killing enemies. And then finally, the build also includes Flame Ward, the staple for basically all mage builds. Uh, he's using an extra charge with Flame with Flame Ward, the reduced cooldown, reduced damage over time taken. But he also has the increased fire damage notes that's um, allowing Flame Ward to be a little bit more offensive in some cases uh, when you want to use it for an extra damage buff. It gives 250% increased fire damage and a little bit of extra spell fire damage with some of the remaining points. So that's basically how the skills function. The two uniques that he includes in this build is a Twisted Heart, um, which helps a little bit. It gives your elemental skills plus one skill level. It also gives you ward anytime you're casting an elemental skill. It's draining your health a little bit and then giving you some ward. Uh, but then you can just leech that back, of course. Um, he's also using Fundamental Criterion. And this is a pretty interesting new Rune Master item that got added. Uh, it gives you plus to your runic invocation level. Uh, but what he's doing with this, fundamental criterion gives you more damage while you're using a wand. And your first rune is a heal rune, which Mirror Bolt uses. It's heal, heal, Ra. And since it also includes heal as the second rune, this item also gives you 3% more damage per strength for invocations. 
And so you'll see on a lot of his, his items, he's also including strength uh, to give you more damage for your invocations. This just ramps up the mirror, Im the mirror bolt damage. But in addition to this, the strength also gives you increased armor, which is kind of nice because it helps just scale up the implicit armor stats that you have naturally on your items. And so you also get a little bit of survivability out of that too, in addition to the more damage. So that's the general gist of how the build works. Uh, you can see some clips too behind me um, on what this build looks like while it's being played. Uh, I'm going to make sure I link his planner down in the description too, so you can look over all the different passives, what gear he's using, what stats he prioritizes where. Uh, also, once again, check out his video because he goes over this a lot more in depth. Uh, I'm just here to announce the winner. And I'll say that Balanov really deserves it. He put a lot of work into this build. But yeah, this is an awesome build. I was super fixated on Mirror Bolt right as this build contest was starting. So I was happy to see that Valinov was playing it too and that he was able to get some good use out of it. Uh, just the war generation in addition to doing damage was looked very juicy. And uh, the build looks very smooth to play. And the Mirror, Bolt, the Mirror Bolt looks a lot of fun, honestly. Just any build that is auto-targeting, you don't have to put too much thought into it. And uh, let's say you can you stream and read chat, right, Mike? <laughs> and the the build is targeting for you it's great i use i like builds like that too but um yeah man this the build contest was a lot of fun and i just want to say thank you again to everybody that submitted there are some really cool builds for team raw that at some point this patch i'm going to go through and try to play and i would recommend it again guys go down to this description and check out some of these other builds Come to the discord and check out these builds too um they're accompanied by descriptions so you can kind of get an idea of what the build creator had in mind with these but uh yeah thank you everybody for watching congratulations to valinov the champion of team raw this was a lot of fun and i hope you guys have fun with the build